Good morning, family, friends, believers, and unbelievers alike. My name is Rain, and I'm on for the week of October 27, 2024, to bring you the Sunday list, Sunday school lesson today. So I'm going to say a quick prayer, then I'm going to give you the title where yeah, this lesson is coming from, and we're going to jump right into this lesson. Our Father and our God, we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for another day, Lord God. We thank you for showing us favor, Father God, by waking us up, Father God, today. God, I ask to cover us, Father God, and keep us as we go out through your day, Father God. Lead and guide us, Father God, according to your will, Father God. Bless this lesson, Lord God, as it goes forward, Lord. Bless it as it reach someone's heart. Father God, that we may change a life, Father God, that we may empower and strengthen someone, Father God, and they may see, Father God, your love for them. God, I pray, Father God, that you get the glory from this, Lord God. In your Son, Jesus' name, I pray under your authority and power, God. Amen. So today's lesson, the title of today's lesson is Jonah Runs and is Found Out. And from the title, you know what book it's coming from. It's coming from the book of Jonah, chapter 1, uh, verses 7 through 17. So, if you're a Bible student, or if you go to church, but or if you're in the Word, you know the story of Jonah and what he did and what God did to him. And you know the what God told him to do and he did not do it. So let's let's explore. Let's explore this uh, lesson. So it's come like I said, it's coming from um Jonah chapter one verses seven through seventeen. Um so let's um read introduction um of this lesson and it's coming from the expository and it reads like this Doing God's will is a simply is a simple matter of his children, right? All we have to do is know his will and carry it out, right? That will always um that um that will always be the easiest way to happiness, right? His will. With truth like this before us. Are we always eager to know what God wants us to do? Right? Um, unfortunately, it rarely seems to work quite that easily. As every believer knows, sometimes it's difficult to do God's will, either because of our own sinfulness or because of challenging circumstances. Those of us who have sought to run from doing God's will um, know that it is impossible to escape his presence. When his will is easy and pleasant, we are eager to fulfill it. But when it demands something difficult, we often try to run from it or ignore it. Jonah tried to run, but God's love for him was too great to escape. God sought him out and gave him another chance to obey. It's great how our God is so loving that he gives us chance after chance to do his will. And this is no exception for Jonah because Jonah, God gave him a chance. Um, gave him the chance um, to do his will. Jonah was commanded by God to go to the city of Nineveh and proclaim um, a message of coming destruction. The Ninevites were powerful enemies of Israel. Instead of obeying the Lord and going to Nineveh, Jonah fled in the, in the opposite direction um, by means uh, of a ship headed to Tarshish. The Lord disciplined Jonah by hurling a great storm upon the sea. 
The crew of the ship feared for their lives and cried out to their pagan gods. When the captain saw that Jonah alone slept through the storm, he woke him and said, What me what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so, if so, that that God will think upon us that we perish not. What follows in verses 7 through 17 is, uh, in this lesson text, um, what follows, excuse me, what follows in verse 7 through 17 is the lesson text for this week. This passage first identifies the source of the storm and then the solution for the storm. So, God gave Jonah a direct message to prophesy his message to the people of Nineveh about their um about coming um destruction because the um city of Nineveh was so evil and bad and sinful God was going to destroy it so he sent Jonah to tell the people about the um come in destruction so they give so God can give them a chance to repent um for their sinful ways and their wicked ways. But Jonah wanted to go wanted nothing to do with this mission that God gave him. He wanted nothing to do with it. He he had so much hate for the the for the the people of, of Nineveh that he was like mm, I'm not gonna do it. I'm going to go the other way. Exactly. God told him to go east. Jonah went west. And he tried to go far, far um, west as he could. But God loves us so much that he gives us chance. He disciplines us um, in our disobedience. But he gives us chances um, to repent. Chances um, to go... Um, the way he's um, directing directing us to go, and we will see that um, as we continue to ex explore this um, lesson um, today. So, the word of the Lord allowed me to format this lesson. Um, it was broken on two halves. First half is going to cover verses seven through twelve, and then the second half is going to cover verses thirteen through seventeen. So, I'm going to read um, verses seven um, through twelve, and then I'm going to. Share what share with you with you what the Lord shared with me. So I'm reading from the New Living Translation um, version of the Bible, so it might read different from your version version of the Bible. Um, so verse seven reads um, like this: Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had off offended. Um, the gods and cause of the terrible storm. Um, when they did, um, when they did this, the lot identified Jonah as a culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us? And they demanded, "Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality?" Jonah answered, "I'm a Hebrew. I work." I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for they had already told, excuse me, for he already told them um, he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you, oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to you to stop this storm? Verse 12. Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this is, this terrible storm is all my fault. Yeah, Jonah. Yeah, Jonah, this storm is your fault. <laughs> God told you to do something and you didn't do it. I digress. So, you see, when God gives us a um, gives us something to do, 
and we try to go our own way, this is what happens. Um, things like this, um, things like this happen. Yeah, thing like this uh, happens. So, Jonah was a prophet during during excuse me during the reign of um, King Jer Jeroboam um, reign. God chose him to preach a warning message to the city of Nineveh, one of the most prominent cities in Assyria. Assyria was an evil empire with a brutal army. They were a threat to the nation of Israel. Jonah's call to speak to a foreign nation is unique among Israel's prophets. Other nations had other nations had prophecies directed against them, but only Jonah was commissioned to go and give a direct message from God. And this is true. If you look through scripture and study um, um, the Bible, you see that most of the messages that God gave his prophets were for the Israelites. It's for his um, His people. Jonah, um, the book of Jonah is unique in, the, in this way because God gave a message um, to his prophet Jonah to prophesy to a, a, total, diff a, total, a total different nation. So Jonah, um, the book of Jonah is unique in this way because God didn't use Jonah to prophesy to his, pe his people, his people Israel. He um, gave Jonah a message to prophesy to a different nation, showing that God um, loves everyone. God wants his creation to love him back and establish a relation back with him. So he gave this message to Jonah to go and um, speak to the the Ninevites, but Jonah, Jonah, nah, Jonah's like, nah, I, I don't want to do it. I, I don't want, to, I don't want them to repent. I want them to um, to be destroyed. Um, this is what happens at times when we become self righteous. How dare us, or in this case, Jonah? Refuse to show the love and grace of God to others. The Bible tells us, this famous um, verse in the Bible, the Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believe in him shall not perish, but have um, eternal life. That means God loved all his creations. It does not matter if they are out there atheists, um, practice pagan um, pagan um, worship. God loves his creation and he wants his creation to love him back and come back to have a right standing with him. So God gave Jonah and he gives us, commissions us to go therefore into the world and make disciples of the other, you know, of the world until he comes back so how dare jonah or how dare us not show the love show love and grace that god showed us when we didn't deserve it god could have destroyed us and start over but he didn't he sent his one and only son into the world to die to save the creation that he created now you gotta think about that for a minute that's real love that's love in action. God wrapped himself in human flesh, suffered, died a horrible and horrible criminal's death just to reconcile us back to him. Now, God gave his message to Jonah. So how dare Jonah, how dare us not to not to share God's message, God's love, God's grace to someone else? So we should examine ourselves every day or every opportunity that God gives us to share him, to share his love. And not when God gives you gives us that commission, like, go ahead, share with this person. God nudges us in our spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in us. So he nudges us like, share with this person. But we're shy 
or you know, we're like, okay, they might think we're weird. It does not matter. When God commissions you to do something, He He's gonna give you the back end. He's gonna be He's gonna be He's gonna back you. He's gonna hold you. He's gonna give you the boldness, the courage, give you what to say to share what He wants to share with that person or people um, or group. It does not matter. But here, Jonah, in his so righteous way, like mm, they don't need it. Let them let them die, God. Let them be destroyed. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to Nineveh and tell these people and warn them about your destruction. I'm going to go this other way. But you see what happens when we don't go God's way, when we get off the course. That we, we're going to see as we continue to go through this lesson. Jonah knew he um, knew he was, excuse me, Jonah knew he was the cause of the raging sea. And therefore had had to suffer the consequences of his actions. Because he didn't listen to God. God caused this terrible storm um, upon the sea. And we see. I mean, we're going to see what happens um, when we disobey God. He laid out a plan. One in which he would have to give his life. Um, give his life. Why did he not simply submit to God? Speaking of Jonah, submit to God and ask the sailors to turn around. It is possible that Jonah uh, preferred to die uh, than to ask God, excuse me, than to give God's message to Nineveh. At least he knew that his absence from the boat would save the sailors. So Jonah was willing to die and disab willing to die to not to bring the love of God to the these people, the grace of God. The message that God gave him to bring to the Ninevites, he was willing to die and not bring that message. Like I asked, like I said before, how dare how dare you, Jonah? Or how dare us not to bring the love of God to someone else? Now he was willing to give his life. Give his life not to bring the message. In contrast, Jesus Christ gave his life to bring the message of God. To bring the revelation of God. To bring the salvation of God to us. But we, as his followers, can't do the same for someone else. Or we can't share the message with someone else. We're gonna think, they're gonna think, we think they're gonna, that they're going to say we're weird. Or we... we um, like we like we act like we're ashamed, proclaim Christ as our Lord. How dare we not to how dare we don't share a life changing message with someone else to change to save their lives? We just we plant the seed and, and then let the Lord do what the Lord does. How dare us, like Jonah, um disobey the God disobey, dis disobey God and then don't follow his commission. So by disobeying God, Jonah put the lives of the men on the ship in danger. As servants of God, disobeying his commands can bring harm to others around us. Us not following God's path can put other people in danger. And we see here in Jonah, see here um, in um, these uh, verses. Because Jonah didn't, didn't obey God and go to Nineveh and preach the message that God told him to preach to the people, he put the lives of these sailors. Now, these sailors had families. They had children. They had friends. They were dads. They were brothers. They were uncles. They were sons. And Jonah put the, live, put the lives of these people in danger because he disobeyed God. When we disobey God... We have a a sphere of in, influence. I mean, atmosphere of influence around us. We influence people whether we know it or not. When we step out of God's will, our influence, exactly, people gonna um, they're gonna be influenced by it. So we might put that when we step out of the will of God, we put people in danger because we're not following truth 
We're not following righteousness, right? So Jonah, not following God, not following truth that God gave him to speak to the Ninevites, put the, the these men um, in danger. In danger. But, but God. If God were, if God were not a loving God, maybe this would have worked. Okay, so if God was a loving God, maybe, yeah, maybe the plan Jonah had would have worked. But maybe, um, maybe it'll work. But God loved Jonah too much to let him escape his will and go his own way, and it's the same for us. God loves us so much. That he sent his only son to die in our place for the dis the disgrace, disobedience, the sinfulness that um, we turned against him. He sent his one and only son to die. He loved us that much that he came up with this before he created anything. He created, he came up with this plan before he created anything to say, these people are going to disobey me, but I, but me, God, I'm going to send my son so they can be reconciled back to me because I love them so much. These creations that I'm going to create, I love them so much. God loved Jonah so much that he, even in, a, in his disciplinary um, actions, God had mercy on Jonah. And we're going to see as we continue through this message, um, through this lesson, the mercy God had and the grace God had um, for for Jonah. So that was just a synopsis of cover, uh, the cover um, verse, uh, verses uh, 12 through, excuse me, verses 7 through 12, what the Lord gave me. I shared with you. Now, for my for the second um, section, it's gonna cover verses thirteen through seventeen. I'm gonna read um, those verses and then I'm gonna share um, what I have. So, verses thirteen it reads: Instead, the sailors sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to the to the land. But the stormy sea was too violent for them, for, for them and they couldn't make it. Um, then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. O oh Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin. And don't hold us responsible for his death. O oh Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own reasons. And then the sailors picked up Jonah and threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged a great fish to swallow uh, Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. <sighs> the sailors. The sailors showed that they had a sense of respect for human life and their in their unwillingness to do what Jonah said. He told them to throw him over the side. Okay? He, he, they told, he told them to throw him into the sea. Just throw me into the sea if they, everything will stop. Um, all this rage, all this wind, this storm, it will stop if you throw me into the water. It's my fault. So, the sailors showed that they had a sense of respect for human life in their unwillingness to do what Jonah said. They might, they might have been seasoned and tough men, but they were not malicious. They were not eager to take a life or, or possibly be guilty of murder. This 
is quite a contrast to Jonah's attitude to the Ninevites. The sailors were willing to go the extra mile to save the life of one man who admitted to his guilt, while Jonah was unwilling to take God's message to an entire city under the threat of destruction. Can you believe that? These pagan men, these unbelievers, they were willing to go the extra mile, row, even, row the boat even harder to get to land so they wouldn't have to throw this man overboard that he possibly um, may die. Because the storm is, the, the sea is violent. The storm is raging real hard. No human, no human person can um, survive with a with the, with the waves going um, that hard, the wind blowing that hard. No one can survive. Surely, if God had intervened, Jonah, Jonah would die. But they were willing. But Jonah, the man of God, the prophet of God, was not willing to go the extra mile to get out of his way, his, his way get out of get out of himself and bring the message of God to the people of Nineveh. And why it's that it's the same. We do that also. We also do that. As Christians, we do that. Like we won't go the extra mile. Like we won't go, oh okay, someone someone asks us um for Someone asks us um, to help them. Say you are you say you're out. Someone asks you to help. Can you um, spare a couple of dollars uh, change? We won't go the extra mile. Like okay, this person is out here on the street. The Lord is leading me um, to help this person. We won't go the extra. We see them on the street. My, they're all right. Um, they can get they they can find exactly they. They're able, they're able bodies. They they can do it. But we, as human beings, we need people. Yes, there are people that take advantage of things. But the vengeance, vengeance is the Lord. That's what the Lord says. Vengeance is mine. So let the Lord avenge you when if they do take advantage of you. Let the Lord take care of that. But if the Lord um, tells us that we need to help the needy, the poor, the orphans, um, the widows. Then that's what we do. We, if some we see someone hungry and um out out um without shelter, go the extra mile. So if that person asks you for a couple of dollars, say, hey, check it. I'm going. I'm going to this in this store. Would you like me to get you something to eat? Go in the store, buy them a couple of things um that they can have with them, um, they they can have with them while they're there out. Because they have nowhere to go. They can't go to a restaurant like us. They can't go to a grocery store because they have the means to get it. And people look at them funny when if they do have little money and come to the store to buy buy something. So go the extra mile. Be like the sailors. Row the boat even harder. Go extra mile to help someone um, that needs um, your help. This part... Of Jonah's story teaches us several lessons about God's dis disciplinary love. First, as shown by Jonah's experience, disobedience to God will bring um, disobedience to God's will brings his discipline. Second, even in the midst of discipline, God can use someone um, as his witness to others. God used Jonah to turn the lives, um, turn the lives, turn the sailors from calling on false gods to worshiping the one true God. Even in the midst of God disciplining us, He can use us as His witness. He can use us. He used Jonah as His witness, even in Jonah's disobedience. These sailors, pagan unbelievers. Um, saw the awesome power of God and said, that's it. God, here's, 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 here's my heart, God. It's like, like it's, that's a sacrifice. Here's my heart, God. Take it. I'm yours. I will worship you 
now and forever. These sailors gave their heart to gave their heart to God and said they're gonna worship him. Even in the midst of the dis discipline Jonah, God used him as his 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 his, his witness. Um third God is sovereign over all his creations and uses it for his purposes. He caused the storm to discipline Jonah and he caused it to cease in order to save the sailors. He even sent a fish to swallow and preserve Jonah while he was in the sea for three days. And finally, God, God's purposes are never thwarted. He wanted Jonah to preach to, to the Ninevites. When Jonah fled in the opposite direction, God both disciplined and preserved him for that mission. Even if, even if Jonah would have um, perished, died, God was God's message to the, to the Ninevites would still um uh would still would it still happen god would have used means of another way to get this message to them if, if jonah would have died if god would allow, allow jonah to die he still would have because his mission his will his plan is never thwarted like it's never interrupted it's never god will get his message through it doesn't matter what obstacles in the way God's message is going to go through. His plan is going to go through. His will will go through because he is an almighty God. There's nothing greater than him. So if Jonah would have died, um, God's message still would have went forth. But God, in his love, disciplinary love, he um miraculously got a big fish to swallow Jonah to keep him preserved in the sea and to transport him to Nineveh to preach his message. Even his love, he showed grace. He didn't allow Jonah to die. When Jonah they threw Jonah into the sea, he Jonah didn't die. That's God's grace. That's God's love for his his children. For us. When we go our own way, God still shows us grace when we go our, our own way. Go, Larry, go, go your own way. Because I know. I know you're, you're going to get to a point that you're like, oh my gosh, why did I come all the way out here by myself? I can't do this by myself. God, I need you. He knows that. It's just like a parent. You discipline your you're like a parent, a parent, you discipline your child because you love them. You don't discipline them because to do it, just to do it, just to be mean, just to be harsh. You do it because you love them, right? If you see your kid going the wrong way, you're gonna correct them. You just you tell your 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 child or who, whoever you're parenting, um, okay, don't do drugs because it's gonna do this A, B, and C to you as you get older. That's because you love them. You don't want to see nothing bad happen to them. You want them to progress in life. Um, you want them to be covered with your love. That's what God does for us. That's what he did for Jonah. He covered Jonah with his love. Because he loved Jonah, he, dis he disciplined him because God is our father. Jonah is his son. He had to dis discipline Jonah because he had to show Jonah, show Jonah a lesson. Like, no, you can't. When I tell you to do something... I'm telling you out of love because I love you and I want better for you. We don't see that. As children, when we're growing up with our parents, we don't see that until we get older and then we understand like, okay, now this is what they were doing this because they loved me. They want the best for me. They want me to grow, grow in character, have values. And that's what God does for us when we follow his will and go his way. And let's leave. I'm gonna leave. Let's leave the lesson um, with this verse um, uh, from Isaiah. Isaiah 53 6 says this All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. 
We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him um, the sins of all of us. Because God loved us and knew we were going to stumble, knew we were going to fall, knew we were going to walk away from him and go our own way, he laid our um, all our faults, all our blame, all our sin, he laid it on Christ because he loved us. No mistake about it, he loved his son. He loves his son, but he loves his creation too. He wants the best for us. So when God disciplines you, don't take it the wrong way. Praise him for it because it's going to make, um, make you better. He's um, building character in you. He's strengthening you. He's strengthening your spirit, man. The Holy Spirit lives in you is strengthening you as you walk through this faith. As you continue to believe in Christ. And the Holy Spirit lives in you. God is strengthening you through, through chastisement, through discipline. He's, he, he, he is growing your character. He's molding you. And he's giving you value. To be a Christian man or a Christian woman. So don't take God's um, discipline um, as a, a bad thing. You take it as a good thing because God has grown, grown you. So if you don't get anything from this, know that God loves you. And he loves you as he corrects you and disciplines you. So thank you for listening. I'm a rain. I love you guys. Um, go in Christ. Peace.